Welcome everybody to Igneous and Metamorphic Petrology. We're going to start out by defining some terms. Let's start with petrology. What does this mean? Well, it comes from the Greek word petros, and this just literally means rock. So when we talk about petrology, this uh, suffix here, ology, means study of. So petrology is the study of rocks. And then we have these terms here, igneous and metamorphic. Uh, igneous, uh, means fire, so we can write this, igneous equals fire, more or less. Uh, you can think of this as the root for words like ignite or ignition, which means to create a spark or a flame. When we say igneous, uh, we mean something that is created of fire. So rocks that are generated by very high temperatures, like volcanic rocks or plutonic rocks, as we'll talk about a little bit later in the course. And then there's this term here, meta is equal to change. And then morph is equal to form. So metamorphic rocks are rocks that have changed their form, and they change their form by recrystallization. So there is some change in the pressure or temperature conditions in which various kinds of igneous or sedimentary rocks exist. And then uh, they recrystallize under those new conditions of pressure and temperature. And when they recrystallize, we get a metamorphic rock. Now notice one class of rocks is absent from here. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about sedimentary rocks. So what is it about sediments that makes them especially different from igneous and metamorphic rocks? Well, the shortest answer is that what igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks have in common is that we can apply the laws of thermodynamics to understand their origin. When we look at the minerals that make up igneous and metamorphic systems, the laws of thermodynamics and ideas of equilibrium come into play. Uh, in the case of sedimentary rocks, the laws of thermodynamics do not determine their mineral assemblages. Those mineral assemblages and sediments are determined by mechanical processes. They are just simply mechanical mixtures, and the minerals don't necessarily interact very much with one another. Maybe processes like diagenesis aside. But with igneous and metamorphic rocks, we can use the laws of thermodynamics to understand how these rocks form and why we see the kinds of crystals and the compositions of crystals that we do. That was supposed to be Petros with an S. Uh, and then what do these things relate to? It's not just the study of rocks, but we're trying to understand volcanoes. We're trying to understand the interior of planetary objects. So we've got a series of photographs here from NASA that show Earth and Venus, and that is Mars, Earth's moon, and Mercury over here. You can see all they look, they all look very different from one another. So why do they look different? How are they not the same? Well, uh, there's an evolutionary path that these things follow, and igneous petrologists are very interested in figuring out why you've got lots of continental crust here, as shown as we're looking at the continent of Africa in this view, but there's no continental crust here, or here, or here, or here. There might be tiny amounts of granite that have been found on the moon, or maybe Mars, but they don't cover large swaths of the planetary surface like they do on Earth. And of course, we have oceans, we have an atmosphere that's also distinct. Does that have anything to do with what goes on inside the, the planet? Um, and maybe volcanic activity that has happened in the past, as well as plate tectonic activity. Uh, plate tectonics is active on Earth, but it's not so very active on Mars. Maybe it was active early in Martian history. We don't really know. I'm pointing at Venus here. It's Mars is this guy over here. Uh, Venus might have a type of plate tectonics, but it really isn't the same as the way it operates on Earth. And then uh, Moon and Mercury, well, we, we don't think the Moon ever had any kind of plate tectonics. Um, and Mercury we know very little about. And then finally, in a new and expanding area of igneous petrology is the study of exoplanets, planets that exist in other solar systems, not our solar system, but in other solar systems across the galaxy. If we want to understand whether or not Earth is unique, are there any other planets in the Milky Way that might be similar to Earth, that might have plate tectonics, water at its surface, uh, continental crust that would allow the evolution of maybe organisms that look something like us, or not, or maybe something totally different. Well, as we explore those exoplanets, we want to understand igneous and metamorphic systems, 
how they affect the temporal evolution and the interior evolution of those planets and how those interior evolutionary processes might affect the surface. And we might be able to say something about whether or not planets like Earth are common or rare. So igneous petrology and metamorphic petrology cover a very wide range of questions, very wide range of rock types. And what they have in common is this idea of using thermodynamics and laws of equilibrium to try to understand these systems.